has added its voice to make sure the problem of climate change is tackled efficiently there. ASAF has joined a global call with other science academics which state that Commonwealth heads of government must use the best available science to guide action on climate change. To talk a little bit more about this, I'm joined by Roseanne Dyep, who is the Executive Officer of the Academy of Science of South Africa. She joins us from our Durban studios now. Roseanne, great to see you. Thank you very much for being with us. Hi, Leanne. Thank you very much for the invitation. Yeah, pleasure. Quite a powerful ad campaign, I must say, sitting and listening to children talking about climate change, because at the end of the day, this is what it's all about. I mean, we are trying to prevent what many are calling the inevitable. We have to stop things now. Um, global call to tackle climate change. Talk to us a little bit more about it. Yeah, I think there, there are many, many bodies who are adding their voices to the call for nations to take action. And here what we have is a, um, a group of science academies and Commonwealth countries around the world who have come together to produce a statement um, calling for actions um, by countries on global climate change. I think the video adds its voice. It's a very powerful message yeah. because the children talk to our future. And um, as you said in the introduction, this statement will be presented at the Heads of State um, meeting in London um, next month. And, and hopefully with uh, academies from over 21 nations, um, very diverse nations, both highly developed and very emerging economies, um, to add their voice to this um, yeah. to say we really need to act now and take action if we're to prevent... Um, a really severe repercussions. We, we talk about ASAF, which of course I, I explained is the Academy of Science of South Africa joining the call. Um, this is a global call which, uh, which you've added your voice to. What kind of discussions were held in the lead up to this? I mean, I don't imagine South Africa's stance has changed uh, significantly at all over the years, except for the call has got louder against climate change. Yeah, so when the Academy takes a decision to um, endorse a statement of this nature, we have um, very rigorous internal discussions. So we participated in the um, final discussions when we were crafting the statement um, to, on teleconferences together with the other science academies. And then once the statement is finalized amongst um, that group, it then gets scrutinized by climate experts within our Academy. and um, there's some minor adjustments to some of the text. Then we send it to our council of the academy. The academy then approves that we can endorse that together with other science academies. And then we add our voice to, to the global network. You know, I, I'm, I can't help but think about the fact that the U.S. doesn't support this, um, the, Paris climate, uh, the, the Paris Climate Change Accord. Now, uh, the latest coming out of this is that uh, there's... There's still time to try and change the U.S. President Donald Trump's mind uh, because he, of course, wants to leave. This was his decision last year, but it can only come into effect in 2020. But there's still a call to try and uh, convince him not to because, I mean, not having the U.S. on board, you know, they're one of the biggest contributors to this. How is this going to uh, hamper the plans that are in place and that global call? Mm, not having the U.S. is, sh is for sure a, um, a problem, um, but the U.S. is not the, the only major emitter. We, we still have involved um, China and, and India. Um, and I think the, the way I look at it is that, um, you know, governments come and go. Whether one can change Donald Trump's mind is, is another matter, but... Um, there may be in a few years' time a, a change in government and a different view from the U.S. Um, it's a pity that they're not involved. Mm. But I think on the positive side, there's enough of um, a groundswell movement within the U.S. from city mayors, for example, um, who are all doing their own uh, or making their own efforts to control greenhouse gas emissions. The fact that it's not um, at the national level is, is perhaps a tragedy. 
But it doesn't mean to say that the rest of us have to stop what we want to do. And it's certainly important that those who are still um, signatory to the Paris Agreement must carry on and do their utmost uh, to control greenhouse gas emissions. Certainly, and I mean, that's, that, that's the whole idea, is to not just bring things to a halt, but to actually speed them up. Quite interesting is that there's this talk around using science to deal with climate change. How? How do we implement that, particularly from a South, Af a South African aspect? Well, there's a lot of science that's, uh, scientific research that's taking place, um, for example, in South Africa. And I think... Um, the challenge for the academy, what our role is, is to um, assemble this scientific evidence in a way that we can present it to government so that they're able to take action. Um, if you think about policymakers, they're faced with so much noise in the system. Information from um, social media, information from the internet, from scientists, all over the place, from so-called experts. And so the role of the academy is actually to... Um, translate the science and assemble it in a way, um, put it together in a, in a form that can be understandable and e easily implementable by government. So that's, that's where we see our role. Um, and we have done some work in climate change already. We've done some work on um, transitioning towards low carbon cities. We've also worked with the Department of Science and Technology to put together a report on the state of climate change science and technology research. So it gives a good idea of what's taking place in the country, where the gaps are, and what government needs to do to make things um, even better. Right, so this is all ahead of that, uh, um, the uh, 22 national academies and societies of science from around the Commonwealth. Um, and this is happening uh, in the UK. Tell us a little bit more about this, just to, to, to wrap up the conversation, exactly when it's taking place. And, and, you know, what actually comes out of a gathering like this? Well, it will be taking place next month. I'm not sure of the actual dates. It will be the heads of government meeting just outside London. Um, we will have representatives there. So I think our role now in, in the lead-up to this event is to make sure that the delegates from government in South Africa who are attending are fully appraised of this um, statement and um, that we can give them as much support as possible. From the academy side, we will have a representative there as well. And we hope that with the voice of um, some of the most prestigious academies around the world, I mean, particularly if you think of the Royal Society, which has been in existence for over 350 years and has been giving advice to their government for, for a long, long time, that it really will have an impact. And that the, the, the countries from all parts of the globe are standing together and calling for action from their governments. All right, we thank you very much, Roseanne. Thanks so much for talking to us here on the program. Roseanne Dibe is the uh, Executive Officer of the Academy of Science of South Africa, adding their voice to the call from different countries, particularly in the Commonwealth, uh, calling for uh, um, climate change and some action against climate change. All right, let's take a break. We'll have some shop shop for you after this. Stay tuned.